So I want to start with um, why this panel. So when Vidak and I spoke a few months ago, what might be interesting to this audience, um, I told him that I see a trend um, among our clients where they are pu there's a great push to uh, leverage as much technology as possible to um, expedite the to accelerate the time to market for the new trading ideas. And one example that we have is a client who cut their time to market from three to four months down to two weeks. And all of that is uh, possible with, um, with the tools that are available now and the tools that are coming. Uh, so I want to start uh, with uh, what is available now, what is, uh, what is wildly used at this point. And um, uh, maybe Chandrish will start with you, given that you are the representative for the asset manager and you can share what your team um, uses uh, for that uh, purpose. Uh, actually in the Rock Creek, uh, we are gathering like a multiple source of data in terms of like uh, data should be like a structured format, unstructured format and semi-structured format. So this data we are gathering like multiple uh, sources like a uh, different file structure format as well as uh, also getting the data from like vendor, the third party API and we are uh, putting all the data into the, the central location in uh, in the cloud and from there so this data we are like first like make it like a slice and dice so so for, for making the slice and dice we need to use like a heavy cloud native tooling like we call it as like a data lake so data lake is like a kind of uh, old traditional uh, uh, data warehousing concept but like based on this data lake uh, we are using um, uh, multiple tool like in aws uh, and we are that that is our like a central location of the data of source there and from that data source, we are making it uh, uh, as like a SageMaker, which is one of the machine learning and AI tool in AWS. And uh, that is the input with like multiple uh, input parameters. And uh, based on that SageMaker, we are like uh, train the model, like build the model and deploy into the different environment. So those those thing is like we are heavily used that. And uh, as it was a presentation layer, uh, from the like SageMaker. So SageMaker is like a middle layer, we can call it as. And, but the, for the presentation layer, uh, we are heavily used uh, the different uh, like in-house application there and that application uh, getting the data from the SageMaker and the central repository is a data lake. And uh, we can also uh, use this data into the different business intelligence dashboarding tool like a Tableau or uh, there is recently introduced by AWS, there is a QuickSight uh, dashboard there. So QuickSight is one of the also uh, like a charting and a BI tool there, we are heavily used there. So so that the tool like uh, currently even Rock Creek, um, um, there are like a different analyst person there or the portfolio manager or uh, uh, hedge fund manager, they are like hey, we rely, rely on those dashboard and and those dashboard like kind of like a real time uh, data update. It's like a near real time, not like exact real time, but like there is a few second to minute lag like there. But yes, yeah. So based on those uh, real time data, that can uh, analyze the data and uh, more uh, decision making process according to that. So to summarize, um, uh, your your team is looking to leverage uh, data of all types and um, to, to in order to make an analysis and decision. And uh, this is the trend that we also observe within our client base when you want to bring your um, uh, real time streaming data with uh, intraday data with historical data and be able to consume it on an ad hoc basis in a very uh, cost efficient manner. So I, I think um, you mentioned cloud and uh, that's uh, probably a, a big aspect of, 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 that, uh, of that process. So um, why don't we talk about um, a cloud as, a, as the enabler of, of, of this um, innovation and um, ability to um, access all, all, all the information that you have uh, in order to make the, the decisions that are required for in this function. So uh, Amy, why don't we um, start with you? Sure, so just um, just so everyone is clear, the, the AWS lingo that Chandresh just shared, Microsoft has all the same stuff. Um, our names are nice and easy to, to understand instead of something obscure like SageMaker, we just call ours Azure Machine Learning. Um, and now we have a groovy thing called Azure Machine Learning Studio um, that's our, our um, enhanced platform that, that specifically addresses a number of generative AI needs and use cases. But leaving the commercial aside, um, I think what's particularly interesting about this moment in time is, you know, the industry has been talking about alternative data for several years now. And what's, what's really 
I think we're at an inflection point where corporations, so corporations have been on this journey to, to migrate to cloud for several years, and it's obviously been accelerating. And that, of course, becomes the raw material that enables alternative data of all types, right? So as cloud usage increases, alternative data will increase in proportion, or rather at a multiple of that. So one example I can give to make this tangible, Microsoft has, or th there's this thing called a digital twin um, that's, uh, that's an assembly of different digital capabilities that's used in a number of different industries. Um, typically in, in manufacturing or production types of contexts. So a couple years ago, Microsoft worked with one of the major oil companies um, to create a digital twin of a drilling rig in the North Sea. And when you create a drilling rig of a, of a facility, whether it's a manufacturing facility or a drilling rig or, or anything like that, you're putting a bunch of devices all over this this um, facility to measure what happens at everywhere across the facility at a level of detail that we never could before. And so, you know, this 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 digit this particular digital twin we use as part of our ESG and sustainability, you know, the the data driven nature of of ESG measurement, because now like the Every barrel of oil that is produced by that digital by that drilling rig doesn't have the same carbon footprint. The carbon emissions from a drilling rig vary based on seasons, based on you know the the geology, where you are in the in the depth of the well. You know, not not an expert in that, but it varies dramatically. And so by creating this digital twin of this rig, we can now measure the carbon footprint of each individual barrel of oil, rather than, you know, just, okay, in the aggregate, this facility, its emissions over, over the span of a year are X. And so if you, if you take that one example, one drilling rig, you know, did, um, you know I, I recently uh, did an event with the New York CFA Society where I talked about um, um, a partner of ours called Ecolab that does this to measure the quality of water used in a soap production plant. So like, we're getting to this whole, like orders of magnitude, deeper detail on the types of alternative data that we can manufacture because of cloud. And so all of that becomes, you know, the, the raw material input to investment decision making. So I think that's, that's one area where, you know, Everybody's, you know, over the moon excited about generative AI, but the it it sits on the, you know, it it's the cherry on top of a, a great deal of innovation, you know, starting with the internet basically, but then going to cloud, then to APIs, then to traditional machine learning, you know, all all of these things build upon each other to get us to this moment where we're at right now. Um, and I think that it's really important to look at that broader context of what cloud is enabling.